Yoresi bivtsoisi siya achile hashchil. Chazal already teach us Ezu chocham hamakiris mekoimoi. But on the other hand, how can't I be makir toiv? To Moronun verabonon rabban shel kobne agoy lo sara toiro agoy na godl rabchaim kenevski zecher tzadik bekodesh livroche. Ain belibi only to be moirer liboisayim shel klal Yisrael. And the schus that I had, Baruch Hashem, to see, to experience, like a child, like a bochur, that grew up in the Yira Torah of Bnei Brak. On one hand, my lev is mole besimche, roime musa lev, that HaKadosh Baruch gave me the schus to see such a godl be Israel. To see the house of Reb Chaim, Kodesh HaKodeshim, to see the Abes Medrash, Lederman, Oimdim, Tzfufi, Mishtachavim, Meruvachim, Mokwe Ma'orin, is not Min But on the other hand, what a Tvir, what a Tayne, and those that witnessed such a Godl be Israel, those that lived around and saw Man Malchei Rabbonon. Bnei Brak was the Chotzer, was like the Azoro of the Kodesh HaKidoshim, of Reb Chaim. And not to be misale, not to become better and grow and grow day, day, month, month. It seems to be that the Chisorin is because it's the Hergel, the Atzlus of the Machshovo. We got accustomed to it, we got used to it, we took it for granted. It's the laziness of the mind that we lived in the Mechitze of such a Godl be Israel, the Oron HaKodesh. And yet, we didn't remember the Haloche. That the Kohen HaGodl, when he enters into Kodesh, into the Beis HaMikdosh, he goes in from the Tzofon and leaves from the Doron. He's not allowed to go, to enter and to exit from the same and from the same Ruach, for the reason that he should not feel that the Mokri Mamigdosh is like Kiro's Beiser, like it's his own house, that will take away from the Moiro, from the Pachad of the Beis Mikdosh. That should have been the feeling of living in Bnei Brak. Moron returned his Neshome HaTeoiro Ve'azako to Ribon Kolo Ilomin An Yoim Purim Shel Mukofin. That is Malchei, Man Malchei Rabbonon. I wanted to be Mishat of the Tzibur, the Bnei HaToyro, with some memories, some experiences that Baruch Hashem I'm carrying with me throughout my life. Yirotzen Lifnei Odin Koil, that these words that will be said by Ezer Hashem will be the Toeles and will be Oila and Shulchan Malochim. And will be engraved in the hearts of Amcho Beis Yisroel. And we should know the derech that Moron Verabonon walked on. And what is the right Hashkofe? That we should also, to some degree, mashu mina mashu, try to aspire to some Shi'ifis. And even this moment of some Achshove of Musil, like the Rav Shach said, it was written in his Tzavoy. Afilu machshove achas shel musar. Even one thought of a musar of a chizuk will count towards his ilu neshome, as he said, "Es nafshi mosarti lemanchem." I was moisel nefesh mamish, and these things, these words, are roui to be said on mohon verabonon reb chaim because he was moisel nafshi kipshutoi leklal yisrael. Be mo akadim, be mo eftach dvorai. How I'm going to start, but. To be able to yoyred lehovin, the godless of Mohon, that's impossible. As again, just an experience, just sharing a little bit of my own hergeshim, and again, not even kikli pasashu. Alo yodato im shamato that Mohon Saratoiro used to call himself a Baal Choiv. It's not a guzme. 
The same way that a Baal Choyv, someone that owns, that, that owes money to someone, he would not calm himself down, he would not be relaxed, he's not going to have a Yishu Vadas until he'll be able to repay the Choyv back. He will go back and forth until he'll be able to gather the funds and be able to pay back the Choyv that he owes. Aboy Saisara Tere Reb Chaim Kenevsky was exactly the same way. He felt the same mahalach, but his but his chavis were not in gashmis dikim yoni. His chavis were the chavis shelimu da toiro. After chatzois, he woke up and he started to say tikun chatzois. After that, he used to learn from the sifra zoya rakodosh. He used to learn the sifra kabole, and he did siyumi manet the sefer pri etzchayim of abchayim vital. The Dua also that the Chazonish also used to learn from that Sefer. He used to learn from the Sefer of the Baal Aleshem. Afterwards, he used to say Tehillim every day. He said the Mizmer that is Shaykh to that day. And during Aserasim Mechuve, he finished every day the entire Sefer Tehillim. It took him about an hour and a half. Afterwards, he used to learn Nach. Every day, he learned one Perek. And the Nevi'im Ksuvim. And afterwards, when he got to Sefer Yecheskel and Perek Mem, that talks about the Tzuris. Abayis b'samigdosh hashlishi. He used to learn it with a map that was printed in the Sefer of Sholem Yerushalayim that has the sirtut of the b'samigdosh hashlishi. And afterwards, he used to learn the Mishnebure three pages of the Sefer Mishnebure. It wasn't always kaseder because when he came to a yomtiv, he used to learn the halachas of that yomtiv before, and then he used to learn in the Rambam three prokim every day. Amol. He says, Be'ovar, he used to learn all the Sefer HaMitzvahs with all the Hasogis of the Ramban, and he said that it has in it, it comes in it, Kol Atiri Kulo, in the Sefer of Sefer HaMitzvahs, in the Hasogis of the Ramban. Then he used to learn in the Shulchan Aruch, five pages every day. He didn't learn according to the Simonim, but according to the pages. He said also, Amol, when he had more time before, he had all the Tzibur, Ramesh, the oil of the Tzibur on his shoulders, before the Tirdas Atzibu, Tirdas Azman, he used to learn all that too with Abis Yisif every single, every, every single year. And now, he says, he's not able to do all the Abis Yisifs and all the two. And afterwards, he used to learn in Talmud Bavli eight pages every single day. Amol, he used to learn in Gemara Ashi Tesvis. But now, because again, the Tirdas Azman, so every year, he does the siyum on Gemore Rashi. He's not able to finish the Tesfis every single year. Together with that was also the Mesech Tanesh that he used to learn. That was very chobi. He wrote a perush on it. He used to learn after Mesech Makis, before he started Mesech Teshvuis, because they're very similar in Yonim. Even though they're in the Shas, it is printed after Mesech Eduis. After that, he used to learn about Tesefte. The seum of every single perik in the Gemara that he used to learn, he also learned that Tisefta that is Shaykh to that perik. And then he used to learn in Tabu the Yerushalmi. He used to learn the pages in the Yerushalmi that are parallel to the Gemara in the Bavli. So if he had Bavli that didn't have Yerushalmi, so that day he did not learn the Yerushalmi. Misechta, for example, on Seidor Kochim, that there's no Yerushalmi, he only learned that day the Bavli. But in Shvisha Pesach, when he started again to go through the Mishnais of Seidor Zroim, and he used to learn in the Seder Zoyim that are printed in the Gemara at the end of Brochus and the, the Tfus and the printed of Vilne. He used to learn eight pages. So eight pages of, of, those, of those Tfus Vilne was called Ol Mesechte Peye with a little bit of Mesechte Dmai in it. And it's known that the Yerushalmi and Zoyim was, was very, very large. So he said that that day he learned 40 pages of Talmud Yerushalmi. 40 pages. Every year of Shabbos after he came back from the mikveh of Tebel the Kovid Shabbos Kodesh, he used to learn Shlaim Mikro Bechotagim with Pirush Rashi. And when he learned in Sefer Shmois, he did the Michilte and the Sifro when he was on Seder Vayikro, and then Bamid Bodvorim with the Sifri. And he said that in the past, again, before he had all the Tirdas of the Tzibu, he was able to learn all the Midroshim, all the Midroshim. But now because of the time, he learns every year a different medrash. And during a Yibriol that he has a little bit more time on his hand, then is when he writes his Chidush Yeteira and the Ksivo of the Sforim. Because of the Tirde, 
from Klali saw that he had on his shoulders, so he used to always sleep less and less. So his grandson asked him, Zayde, how could you, Saba, how could you, how could you hold on to, I'm asleep so, so little at night. He says, what, I don't have a choice. I'm a Baal Choyv. And I have to be able to repay back my Choyvis. The Rebetzin also had her Choyvis. The Rebetzin woke up every night at about 1.30 in the morning and she used to help her husband also. And then she used to say to Hillim, Igeras Aramban, Perik Shiro, that is Shaykh to that day. And then she used to learn two halachas on the Sefer Shmira Salos and the Chofetz Chaim. And then later on, in, 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 throughout the years, she added two other, two additional halachas as a schus and a zgulo that all the people that require that need a Yeshua. And then she used to learn the Sefer Ochis Tzadikim. Rabbi Isai, how did Mohon Sara Toiro Zoyche to such a siyat and Ishmaye Mamish to know Kol Atiri Kulo was povus lefonov kesimlo one of the known reasons we know also Avade such as Yad Ishmael, but how the Kvius, the Hasmode, the Nitzul Azman, every, every second counted. Every second counted. And Erev Shabbos Kodesh, Parshas Vo'iro, the year Tovshi Nain Vov, before Adlok Asneris, Reb Chaim didn't feel so well. He had fever. And with all his, that he was so weak, he was able to finish Masech De Menoches. That was the Masechta, according to the Seder that he was holding. Moitzi Shabbos, they decided that they're going to take him to the hospital, my Yeshua, to, to be admitted. When they told it to Reb Chaim, he said, how can I go now to the hospital? I have to start Masechta Chuli now. But when he get to the hospital, finally, so they took, Bnei Abayis took all the Sifra Chavis that Reb Chaim has, and they put it in his shelf, on the shelf in the hospital bed, in the hospital bed, and every single day he was able to be makpit to mekayim all his chivis. From the age of 16, when he was mekabal on himself, to be able to be kriveya, zman, lilimuda toiro, to be able to be a masmin, to be able to be menatzel, to every single second, that was the zman, when he came up with this idea of mamish being a baal choiv and lilimuda toiro. At first, he said it was a little bit challenging, but two years afterwards, he was able to marish gan shas again and again every single year. And then to add to that, kol chilke atoyro as well. Like the Pesuk says, if Yaniel beis ayin zot chazal a maltif, like a cellar full with yain, the same way that someone that is a drunk person that cannot dis attach himself from the Yain. Reb Chaim Kenevsky was not able to, di- to disattach himself from the Teira Akdoisho. It was mamish like a Yain to Ashikir. Does that Teira was the same way to Reb Chaim. They asked the Rav Steyman once, how is it possible? We talked to Reb Chaim, mamish, he knows, Koila Teira Kulo Kipshutoi. How is it possible? Zog the Rav Steyman, do you know how you could have a Zoyche Siyata Dishmaye? But you know how you could be Zoyche to such a Siyata Dishmaye? And he says, when you go into a store and you ask the, the, the Makolet and you ask the, the owner, you ask someone that works there for an item, for some product, and he tells you, go over there and you can find the product on this aisle, this shelf. You know, the owner would know, Mamish, all the products that are on the shelves. He would know where you could find, because again, those is his Palnose. That's Kdei Chayov. That is his Kdei Chayov. That's what he needs for the customers to know and to, to, to be able to sell. He will know the prices. He will know the item codes. He would know. Zokta Rav Shteyman, Dos is Reb Chaim. Reb Chaim, Butnatere, was mamish like, Dos is a Kdei Chayov. He knew be such a behiru, such klol kite. The kol atere kulo. Ki heim chayeinu ve'oyrech yameinu. Rabo Yisai, Everyone was talking about the Maisa Amoifsin that came out from the Chotzer HaKodesh of Reb Chaim, the Teva, the Teva, the, na- the nature of a person is that he find it fascinating, it's exciting. Oh, you see Gilu Shechina in such a way. The Shechina is Medaber Mitoch Goinoi, Ruach HaKodesh, the Nevus of Nevuah from HaChachomim was Mamesh Shorui Ve'arichoi Bereyach Hashem. I know also that these are Pele Ploi, Avadai. 
things that are said on the Gdayla Rishayim, Am Rishayim, Gdayla, Gdayla Achreinim. But the Moisa Rabbi say those Moisim are only a poal yoitzi, are the result at to itzoe. Because Reb Chaim Kenevsky was the sholit on the Brie, he controlled the Brie. The Gemara B'Kiddushin says when a, tes- when a person learns Teire, that Teire becomes his. When he's mechadosh b'teire, that Teire is his. The Zer HaKodesh in a few places says that the Teire is the heart, is the neshome of the Brie. The Gemara Be'erchin says that when you buy an Eved, if you only buy the hand or the, or the leg, so you only own the hand or the leg of the Eved, but if you own, if you buy an Eved, from an Eved that the Nishama is Tolui, you own the entire, the whole Eved. If you own the heart of the Eved, as an example, you own the entire Eved. You are bailing on that Eved. Mimele dos is the Teire, when a person learns Teire, and the Teire becomes his Teire. Hare, the Brie, that, that is the, the Nishama from the Teire, the Teire is the Nishama from the Brie. That means you own the Nishama of the Brie, you own the entire Brie. You own the Brie. So the Mele Reb Chaim did Maisin Moifsim Ba Brie because he owned the Brie, like a Pinchas Ben Yoir and others, Nar Ginoe, because he was a Sholit on the Brie. Chaim didn't just learn Teire, he was a Chevtsefum Teire all those years. We came across to come to Davin in the shul. My mother, Imi Meirosi, before she got, she went into the shul to Davin Minche and Lederman. She used to always wait until Reb Chaim came into the shul to see such mamish maris alaykim, to see God Ladeir walk in. And then she walked in and Davin Tfilas Minche in Besmedrash in Lederman. I remember also as a bochu, we also used to walk to Davin during Benazmanim in the, bes, in the Besmedrash and Nederman. We used to sit and learn there during the Benazmanim, the Davin there. And when we saw Reb Chaim come, he used to go down the steps. That was before the bridge. He used to walk down the steps and walk into the Besamedrash. The moment that he opened the doors of the house, it was like You see Reb Chaim walking out. His hands, his legs are mamish like the Eitzachayim from the Sefer Teire. His heart is those as Aluche Sabris. And that's how he walked into the Beis HaMedrash. This is mamish. Ashrei Ayn Rooso Koleile. But I would like to share with you, Amorifes. See the Sforim of Reb Chaim. Derech Emuna and Seder Zroim. The mamish has in it called the Shittis of the Rishenim and the Achroinim, the Chazunish, his own Chidush Eteire. If you look in Derech Emuno, every page would seem that it will take a month to write. A page, a month. What a Geinis, what Klorkait, what a Bihirus Adas, Bihirus Amachshove. The Sefer Nachal Eisen, an Eglo Arufo, it is known that Reb Chaim wanted to make sure that every single Yid would be able to learn kol kulo, and every part of the Teire will be understood. Reb Chaim had more plans in his life to write Sforim on Yifas Toyal, on Ben Tzair so many Dvorim and Chalokim in the Teire that maybe are not so understood, or there's so many parts of this. He wanted to write, so he started with Eglo Arufo. If you see the Shoyne Haloches, how with all the Psakim of the Mishnebu and the Chazunish, and so Klo, things that sometimes... It's a little bit unclear when you go through the Mishnah Bur, Reb Chaim was able to make it so clear, so bohir. The Mesech Tanis, that was very chobi, the Kiras Melech and the Rambam. When you see that the Noise Kelim and the Rambam didn't bring a mokor, a source for Halokha and the Rambam, where he got it from, he was able to bring those Mekoirois, Mavil and Arayin, Siach Hasode, Veoit Koheno Vekoheno. But Rabbi Isai, if you would open the Sefer Taim and Dikor Al Atere, Pacha Pchodim, wherever Kol Ar Kol Aroya Oimer Bar Koy, if you just open the Sefer, you see Mazen Mamish Maru Yisaloikim, Mazen Mamish Chokhmas Aboire in the Sforim, 
but I haven't yet told you the Moifis. If you see the Pashas Kiseitze, in Perek of David, in Posuk Aleph, on the Posuk, the Kosav Lo Sefer Krisus, it's known from the Gro, and I'm quoting the Loshan of Reb Chaim in the time of the Gro, he says, Kosvu B'Shem Agro, they bring from the Goyen, that why a get is called a get, a lekach nikro get, you know why a get is called get, gimel entes, is because the oisies of gimel entet, lo imotzinu smuchim ze lo ze bekol apsukim. You wouldn't find the letters gimel entes next to each other, samuch to each other, in koil atoiro kulo. Mimele, if you never find the letters gimel entet together, it's a semen of pi with avarchok, and that's why geushin is called get. That's why it's called a get. According to the Madriga of the Gro, we could understand that the Gro would say such a gayness. Ober I would like to share with you what Reb Chaim says. Zot Reb Chaim v'tzori chiyun. He's asking Akashi on this. Shegam Oisius, he brings other pairs of letters. I'll share with you three of the pairs of letters that he brings. Oisie Gimel and Kuf, Zayin and Tes, and Zayin and Samech. Zogt Reb Chaim loy motzosi smuchim bapsukim. I didn't find these three pairs of letters, Gimel and Kuf, Zayin and Tes, and Zayin and Samech. He hasn't found those letters together bekoil atoiro kulo. Aval Sh'ar Oisis, the other letters in the Aleph Beis, Nimtzayim are there, Yosho Rohofuch, straight or backwards, you would find them somehow together. But Gimel Kuf, Zayin and Tes, Zayin and Samech, you wouldn't find them smuchim to each other, Bekoil Atoiro Kulo, Peneploim Rabo Yisai. Zok Reb Chaim, do you know why Dafka they picked Gimel and Tet? Because that is the Rishon, these are the first letters, that are Eino Samuch, that are not next to each other. Mavir ala rain rabo Yisai. Kol atire kulo chofna le tzvorim tereshe ba'alpeh. Everything is, no, he's so klor to Reb Chaim. He sees the oisir satire. Al ke niku chachomim soifrim. Isn't this a moivis? Sinai, Sinai, lo nikro, hori she bachaburo. Is a Sinai for Iker Horim, the Toychanon Zube Zube Swore, like Trashi says at the end of Hoyu Boitkin. He was given by the Milchanter Shontere, Baal Mishnai is Harbe. Again, Ashrei Ain Rosso Kolele, Aldo Kobuchine, Koshe Silukon Shul Tzadikin, Kesreifas Base and Oikenu, the Kolbeis Israel Ifku is Asreifo. Asher Sorav Hashem, Sreifas Aurim Vitumim, Sreifas Lishka Sagozi, Sreifas Luches Abriz. In the same middle, the Reb Chaim Kenevsky, Moron Sarateru, was a Saratoiro, the Ben Odom Lamokoim. In the same middle, he was a Saratoiro, the Ben Odom Lechaveiroi. Reb Chaim Kenevsky was noise be oil im Chaveiroi. Bechol tzorosom lo yitzor kipshutoi. When I grew up, we lived in Tel Aviv. And as I was growing up, I learned in Talmud Teireh in Bnei Brak, in the yeshivas in Bnei Brak. And when my siblings also grew up, they also used to go to Bnei Brak to learn the Talmud Teireh and the Chadorim. And it came a time that with all the Mesirus Nefesh of my parents, of Imeirivim and Meirosi, to take us back and forth, my father went to Reb Chaim to consult and to ask Moron Sarah Tere on an Eitzo that would love to move to Bnei Brak would love to be able to live in the Yira Toiro Ober. The prices of the apartments was mamish so, so expensive that it was mamish not shaykh tos is kesef minolom. And my father went to Reb Chaim and he spoke to him. Reb Chaim listened 
And then he said to him, Come and live next to me. My father said, I'm saying, it's not Shaykh. Hashem Yazo. And I'd like to share with you, Rabbi Isai, when Chaim Kinevsky says Hashem Yazo, in our household, as I was growing up, that means it's going to happen. At the same time, my father in Tel Aviv was Baruch Hashem Mechazik, a few families, and as those families, Baruch Hashem already entered the seminarium when the yeshivas and Bnei Brak also, my father got a phone call from three family members that haven't spoken to each other and my father never approached them before. And they asked my father this kashi. I see your kids every day traveling to Bnei Brak. You seem like a yid that should live in Bnei Brak. Why aren't you? And my father just told him that he would love to move to Bnei Brak. But the Maisi is, it's very expensive. Be'ezer Hashem, one day when HaKadosh Baruch Hu would allow, will provide Be'ezer Hashem the funds to go, so Be'ezer Hashem will move them. The conversation ended just a few days later. My father received the entire amount that he needed from these three family members. Rube de Rube was a matnas chinom. He never spoke to them before about it. Ober, when Rab Chaim said Hashem Yazor, Boruch Oimer veOise Goizer umikayim, Tzadik Moshe Biira Seloikim Tzadik Goizer vaKodesh Boruch umikayim. My father was able to buy an apartment. In Eretz Yisroel, exactly how Reb Chaim says, Bo v'tagur liyadi. Across two, one road, it's on the corner. Chazunish of where Reb Chaim lives. My mother, Imi Meirosi, went to the Rebetzin and she told her the great news and she smiled and she said, Be'ezer Hashem, she will share these great news with Reb Chaim. I'd like to share with you another story that I heard from our Magid Meishorim, our Rab Shlomo Levinstein, Shlite. Rab Shlomo Levinstein said over on the Hesped, also on Moron Sarah Toiro, that at first it was challenging, it was an Isoyen, for him to be zoiche, to a pre button to a child. And he went to Reb Chaim Kinevsky to get a broche. And a broche for Matzadik, he was zoiche to Baruch Hashem, to a son. Afterwards, he came back to Reb Chaim, a while later, whatever time it was, to Mispal, to be zoiche to another child, Reb Chaim said, no, you have one son. You need another one, another child. And it was Mispalel. And Reb Shlomo Levinstein was Zoyche to a daughter. Now he had a son and he had a daughter. And the third time came around and he came to Reb Chaim to ask for a broche to be Zoyche to another child. Reb Chaim said, now you should go and consult with the doctors. Now go and ask. Or go and speak to the medical professions to see what could be done. Reb Shlomo Levinstein said that at first he thought that Reb Chaim just says, 
No, he says a bracha. Bracha here, bracha here, and Baruch Hashem, it's miskayim. So if that's the case, why not to go again and to ask for another bracha? But when the third time came, and Reb Chaim told him, go and misya, it's baroifim, go and ask and consult with the doctors. And Reb Chaim didn't continue to say the same bracha as it was at first. Rav Shlomo Levinstein understood that the first two children that he was Zoyche came because it wasn't just Stama Broche of words. It was that Reb Chaim was Mishtatif in his Tsar. Bechon Tsar Osam Lo Yitzor Kipshutoi. He felt the need. Have you ever? When the Rebbein Shalom gave the Hashpoe, the Broche, to the person that needed it, it wasn't only Mikoyach, the Schuyas of the Odom receiving the Broche. Because we have heard so many Moifsim and so many Broches that are Miskayim, even on people that maybe were not Oiches and Haimadregis. But yet, they received the Yeshua, and how? Because when Reb Chaim was mishtatif batsar, he was noisin be'oil. He, went, he asked for the broche, he be'etzim, put himself in the mokoim, in the shoes of the recipient, as if he requires, he needs that Yeshua. Mimele for him, tos is revadai. Tzadi goizor v'akodesh bochum mikayim, mikoyach ha'schuyes of the God will be Israel. was a noise oil with the tzibu. I'd like to end this Indian by maybe Efshar that you could try to Mashu minamashu emulate from the Hanhoge, the Hashkofe of Reb Chaim, the Hashkofe of doing mitzvahs bizrizus, being able to be menatzel the zman, nitzel the zman, to realize that every second counts, every moment of Teiri counts. His grandson just said over. That when his mamish a few weeks ago, behind the age of 94, he was very tired. He needed to take a nap, to, to, to take a rest. But he felt that he had a few more seconds until he's going to fall asleep. He asked from his grandchild that was there with him to bring over the Gemore. He laid down with the Gemore. He was trying to open it, but he wasn't able to keep it open. It was too heavy for him. The grandson held the gemore. Chaim was just learning a little bit through it, and then he fell asleep. When the child just moved aside, he saw how the Chaim just grabs the, the gemore and holds it tight to his heart. The grandson documented this, showed his children, and he said, Look, you see, He's talking to his daughter, the seven-year-old, and obviously to the rest of them as well. They go to sleep. They go to sleep with a little bit of a doll or with something that gives them comfort. What is his comfort? It's to hold the safe, to hold the gemore, to go to sleep with it. The Prime says a pshat in the Sidu, loy omus he asks, it's a repetitive. It says, Loyomus, so I know ki yichye. Zotab Chaim, you have sometimes people that even though that the, the Loyomus, they're not, they're not dead, or they're not Chai. Chai means Chaim Shul Toiro. Chai means Avoida Sashem with Simche Bizrizus. The grandson says over that when the Chaim sometimes used to sing, and even times to wake up his children, 
in the morning, he used to sing to them, he made a tune to the words of Shleim HaMelech, Ad Mosai Otzel Tishkov, Mosai Toku Mishnosecho, until when the Otzel, the lazy person, would sleep, when will you wake up from your nap? Me'at Shnois, Me'at Nunois, Me'at Sraglaim, Lo Hutz the Atzlus is the worst Shebamidis. Shleim HaMelech refers to him Ach Lebal Mashchis, the brother of the Sotan. Chos Alev, someone that has no heart. That is an Atzlon. Keneged is the Mida of Zrizus. I'd like to end this with a story. A very emotional story. Imi Meirossi used to go visit the Rebetzin, daven with the Rebetzin, the shul, always close, always like to ask for a broche, to speak a little bit to the Rebetzin. So there was one Shabbos, Shabbos Chol Amoyet, Sukes, Nidzayim Tishrei. Imi Meirossi, my mother went to the shul on Lederman, to daven Minche. She met the Rebetzin and she told her good Shabbos. But this was a different than any other time. Any other time, the Rebetzin would have right away reply with a good Shabbos and a smile, but this time, she didn't really reply. My mother even continued and complimented her on a new coat that the Rebetzin bought for the Yom Tev. But still, there was no, there was no really a response. My mother davened, the Rebetzin davened, and then she left to go home, the Rebetzin. My mother remained in the shul to say to Hillen, less than five minutes, there were noise outside. All the Koyhanim should leave the area. Seconds later, they ran into Ledoman and they said that the Rebetzin returned on the back to Ribo in Kolo Ilomim. Until today, the story, Mamish has so much meaning. My mother was able to Mamish be with the Rebetzin Mamish less than five minutes before she entered Gan Eden. Mishemais Rabbeinu Chaim Kenevsky v'Arabonis Schusam Trogen Oleinu Botla Kovedatire. Tiyen Shmosam Tzuro B'Tzuri Chaim.